So welcome back to Pixel 2022. I am now joined by Sean Larson, Lawson sorry, and Ryan Ross-Smith. And they're going to tell me about this Akira project that you've submitted. Great. Um, so I'm Sean. I, I don't know what on the video you get to see or don't get to see. I, I, I see my little name on the corner. Ryan is below me. Um, so our... Uh, there's my dog also. Um, <laughs> uh, so our project is, uh, we have this duo that's called the Rebel Scum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm Obi-Wan Kodenobi and Ryan goes by the Wookiee. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are our stage names. Um, uh, I live code computer graphics and Ryan live codes um, computer audio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Akira project is sort of a, was kind of coming together before the pandemic and has kind of emerged through the pandemic as I think now we have the neighbor's dog also, um, as this kind of like futuristic nightmare in a way of what it's like to be in the pandemic. Um, is the dog barking at your place, Ryan? Do you want to take over? <laughs> I had it muted because the dog is the dog is barking, but it's, you know what, it is what it is. Um, yeah, it, is, is that okay if the dog's barking while I'm Yeah, talking? no, he can contribute to the interview as well. If okay, he good. feels the need to. <laughs> Jeannie, come here, come say hi. Um, we, I, I like, yeah, Sean, the, you know, this, this idea of like the end of days kind of scenario, I, I don't think there's probably very few people who sort of didn't feel that way in some degree, right, for a couple of years. Um, but with, there's also like the, the second kind of like dystopian nightmare type of piece right because um deckard was or that's what we called it right yeah based on um uh blade runner mm -hmm. um which also takes us to a very very kind of dark futuristic place so there's clearly a theme um that and, and as sean said like with the rebel scum there's not a lot of positivity in those film in the star wars universe either um at the end of the day the good guys win but it's pretty awful, also dystopian <laughs> kind of society. So yeah. um, I guess that's I, I don't really know. I don't really know why we we, we keep sort of leaning towards those themes. Um, well, you know. I mean, uh, Akira, when it was made in 84, 85, was designed to be set in the year 2019. And I think that's when we started making the piece was 2019 when Akira oh, yeah, was yeah. supposed to be set. And so now we're kind of living through the Akira aftermath of post 2019 into post COVID of 2020 to 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I think Blade Runner was the same. Wasn't Blade Runner? That was our Deckard piece. Was that also set in 2019 or 2020? It, yeah, yeah. It was something like that. I think so. An interesting fact about Blade Runner. I don't know how true this is, but we've got this really horrible steelworks in Wales in Port Talbot. And apparently the set design was based off of this, uh, yeah, really, <laughs> horrible smelly steelworks that we so uh yeah that's amazing <laughs> all right we gotta go to wales check it out yeah you don't go to all of the usual sites the castles or anything go to the steelworks and that's, yeah that, that's what sean and i Soak are it in. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you move well you've basically described it that what made you go in this direction now um what other influences do you think have there been apart from the pandemic and this dystopian sort of uh, society? I mean, I think for me, like for the sound that, I mean, were you, were you, well, first of all, like it's very literal in some ways because we're using a lot of samples from the dialogue of the film, mm -hmm. um, which you'll hear um, in the, we, we sent the clip, I think, but also like in the actual performance. And so like, but beyond that, the kind of, I think that the urban landscape, you know, transmits very, very, very well to um, kind of gritty electronic music, as it, which is no big surprise, right? Um, but uh, and so for the kind of music uh, that I'm interested in making, at least you know, for this project, it just fits in very well to not do something that is. Um, you know, mellow or, or, or slow. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, this sort of just fits in with, I guess, with the vibe more than anything else. 
Cool. Sean, have you got anything to add to that? I, I, I was I was having some cognitive dis dissonance there, having Ryan talk about futuristic urban uh, techno when he's sitting in the countryside. But yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, because it's a uh, it it's sampled and it's procedural graphics. There's a lot of thinking about technology and computation, and sort of where that's progressing in, into the future, and trying to work with. Um, uh because it's live coding working with code and algorithms on the fly while it's evolving so it's not just being controlled by the code or being controlled by the computer but having this sort of symbiosis between working with code and the computer simultaneously rather than being controlled by it so it's a i don't know trying to take back some control but a lot of the times when in the performance it feels out of control mm -hmm. kind of a strange place to be and where do you see yourselves going in the next 12 months? Will you collaborate with each other still? Will you do some collaborations with other people? Will you do your own stuff or? Oh, um, <laughs> I have, do you want me to start? Sean and, I, Sean and I are never going to stop collaborating with each other. So <laughs> we're going to, we'll, we, Sean and I will continue doing this. I hope, I hope as long as we possibly can, because it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And certainly, like before, um, before the pandemic, um, and particularly when we used to live fairly close to one another, um, we would. I don't. I for a while we were going, we were going to a lot of fun places together, and it was a really good time. Uh, yeah. And so, um, hopefully, we'll get that, you know, get that back up and running. But also, You've I mean, we've got to go just, to Port Talbot Steelworks together on that's a right. nice yeah, yeah, yeah. holiday. We need to, yeah, we need to set up like a, like a, you know, I don't know, immersive environment or something like that. But I think there's all, there's still, I mean, we were just talking on Friday about what do we want the next thing to be? And uh, that would be probably the next 12 months in some regards, depending on, uh, you know, what kinds of things come up. There isn't always like a huge market, right? Like, like, you know, we don't, can't really go down to the, coffee shop and like do this kind of stuff so we really rely on like like places like pixel and stuff like that you know to to actually like um support this kind of work which is really nice but um i, I but I, I we both i mean i'm sean you, you can you obviously you should answer too but like um we both do our own things as well and work with other people sean you you work with a, a ton of people doing live coding visuals yeah, I mean, we we used to. I mean, it was expensive to fly to Europe four times a year. I think that's what we were doing before mm. the pandemic. But I, yeah, we're we're working on new things that could last. Who knows how far? And then we'll change that and do something new that'll last. Who knows how far? So it's just kind of like always evergreening into the next new thing. Um, uh, oh, I had another idea. Now I've forgotten what it was. Uh, Is it about the dog? I no, so. <laughs> no, no, no. Our our dog has just come back from a walk, so I, hopefully he is going to chill out and be good. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I do. I do have a lot of people I'm working with. A lot of the live coding I've been moving into is involving machine learning, so it's also trying to expand sort of the visual um, uh, language that I'm working with and sort of keeping on top of current trends and technology and sort of integrating that. Um, oh, I remember. Uh, the other thing that, I mean, coming out of, hopefully coming out of pandemic is seeing which venues and which opportunities have survived um, COVID and pandemic because performance is sort of a venue that requires people be together in the same place. And so when a lot of those opportunities are closed or don't return, um, things have to be built back up again. So something like Pixel or... <laughs> Uh, other festivals or um, places that hold performances, you know, have to rebuild again and sort of like figure out how do we do this again? How do we do these things again? Who are the people who are still performing? And uh, um, that's something I think that has to be regained slowly, little bit by little bit. And um, a lot of what happens in live coding is sort of um, grassroots and, and open source. So it's people kind of finding each other and kind of building it up from the bottom. And so I think a lot of that will have to come back again as everyone sort of regathers and 
figures out how to go into the future with, with what's happening. Great, great. Have you got guys got anything else to add now? Uh, or shall we say our goodbyes? <laughs> well, I, I think, um, you know, like we so so this is a very much a, you know, an artistic collaboration. Um, that part of it, obviously, I hope that's obvious. <laughs> Um, you know, Sean and I have known each other for um, uh, uh, 10 years now, by the way. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. I know. And, and we started doing this in 2015 or 16, something like that, right? Um, yeah. Um, or bef No, it was, bef it was 2015. It was something like that before that. But um, so we uh, also, so we, so we have this memorialized in... Um, <laughs> In, in video sean and i are also great friends and so that's what that's a that's what makes things really nice um if anyone's watching this that's thinking about collaborating collaborate with someone that you like hanging out with um this dog is standing in the background right there um but also like you know my role is very much the audio side of things sean's role is the video side but also all of the infrastructure mm -hmm. and i think it's important sean for you to um say something about how like this has developed over uh, over the years because when we both lived up in albany and troy we would just get together and and do this in person but since 2000 uh, well well certainly since like 2018 i moved overseas yeah and then um sean moved to phoenix i'm back in new york now I may as well still be in Australia as far as like, you know, us actually seeing each other in person. So we wouldn't be able to do this without Sean putting together uh, the, I don't even know what it's called anymore. Um, Cause it's gone through a lot of iterations. So Sean, you should really brag about that. Uh, okay. Um, you don't have to, but I think you should. Okay. Well, so um yeah, so uh, like telematic performance is a is a big problem in kind of multiple ways because it's it's hard to do, and so it's not like you can run to the store and buy Adobe Teleperformance whatever Pro or something. Can you not? Account. Surely the shops in America have everything. Target. Uh, Hey, yeah, maybe. maybe we we never okay. looked at Target for the for Telematic Pro. Maybe they have it. That's right. I'll I'll, I'll jump down to Best it's Buy. It's right Costco. next to the wetsuits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Between dog food and and furniture, it's right there. Yep. Um, so we've we've needed to build our own tools that kind of allow us to sort of transport um, audio or video or code remotely around the globe and that's kind of the only way we're able to do the performance into into norway is with a lot of the technology that we've been building and it's um not all of it but a large component of it is open source so it's also trying to give back so that other people can use this although i don't think anybody wants to use my terrible code so um it's kind of a spider web nightmare and i'm <laughs> surprised it works at all but you know it it seems to hold up okay Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I, I, I think it's really important, you know, like Sean and I would not have been able to continue doing this. Like we would have had to stop doing this in 2018. Like, mm -hmm. And um, or we could have done that, done this, but it would have been more like traditional telematic performance of streaming audio and streaming visuals, which we, we, we are doing right in some situations. But when we're like, we're, uh, when we are, uh, you know, uh, practicing or performing, we're still seeing everything. I'm seeing everything he's doing client. Well, no, I'm not seeing the client side anymore. I used to, but you're hearing what I'm doing client side. So there's, yeah, you know, so there's no, like, we're not like, um, uh, having to reduce the quality of the stream or anything like that. Cause there isn't really a, there's a stream like via Twitch or something like that, but that's also, I mean, that's just much better than it used to be anyways. Anyhow, Sean, thanks for putting all that stuff together. We wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't be able to do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the short answer to the long answer is that all of the code is transported and it's very small. And the audio and the video are both generated 
client side. So if one of us is at a festival, like if I am at a festival, I can run my computer graphics at the projector at full quality. And then Ryan, wherever he is, Australia or New York or, you know, wherever it is, is running code on my computer remotely. Mm -hmm. And so his audio is running also on my computer, but he's controlling my computer from somewhere else. So the experience for everyone at the location is as good as we can possibly make it as if we were both there. Mm -hmm. and, and this happened, this was, I mean, I, I, when, when we, we, we went to a conference in Mexico <laughs> and um, my, so Sean made it, um, <laughs> but my flight, my flight got delayed so long that I would have shown up. It was I think only a day. I, yeah, but it was, it was no, 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 no. It was, it was more than that because two days. It was crazy. It was a crazy situation because it was not a common. It, I, it basically I, my connecting flight wasn't delayed. My flight to Mexico City was delayed. So uh, by the time I got there, I would have had to take this like crazy bus ride, and I would have arrived an hour after our performance. Mm -hmm. So I, you know. I, I called Sean from Newark Airport. I was like, I don't think I can make it um, unless they change the schedule, but that's going to, it's going to be down to the wire. And the, fortunately it wasn't a big deal because we were still able to do the performance. I would have loved to be there, but um, because of the, the way the system works, um, wasn't as interesting for me. I was just sitting at home, my couch, um, <laughs> you, you know, and then we did the performance and Sean, you know, sent me a message. He's like, Everybody really liked it. There's a lot of clapping and like, you know, cool. I wish I was there. But uh, so, anyways, it's a yeah. That just like what Sean built is a huge part of this of this collaboration, for sure. That's great. And so, thank you for contributing to this year's uh, Pixel Festival, even if Absolutely. it is remotely. And I want to say thank you to your pet dogs as well for yeah. contributing. Right and on. so, yep, Ryan and Sean keep collaborating and then go to Port Talbot Steelworks on a little holiday. We're, good. Great. we're, we're, we're planning on it already. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you. Okay, this is really bye fun. Bye. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you. See bye you. Bye. See you. Bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>